Andrew Gwynn. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I'd like to start by thanking the Secretary of State for advanced uh, sight of his statement. But we should call this out for what it is. This supposed funding boost is a pittance that will do little compared to the billions the Secretary of State's government has already cut from our local communities. It will do little to reverse the damage they have inflicted in each and every region. Because the reason that many of our towns are struggling is because of a near decade of politically imposed cuts, including to council funding and public services by this Conservative government. And no one should be hoodwinked by such a shameful and pitiful attempt to gain support for the Prime Minister's botched withdrawal agreement. Mr Speaker, the fact is... Between 2010 and 2020, councils will have lost 60 pence out of every one pound that the government provided for our communities and services. So I ask the Secretary of State, why has he cut 60 pence in every one pound from local government? Why didn't he announce a reversal of that cut today, considering that they have left local services facing a funding gap of £3.2 billion? And worse, by 2025, the gap facing our local councils will rise to £7.8 billion. And if this wasn't bad enough at a time when the government should be reinvesting in our most deprived areas, they are instead cutting them even harder. Nine of the ten most deprived councils in England will have seen cuts of almost three times the national average cut. And with policies such as these, does the Secretary of State believe that his party are truly showing themselves to be the party for the few and not the many? Or is it, as many of us suspect, a thinly veiled effort to mask their near decade of failure? The Secretary of State says he's taken deprivation into account when considering the allocation of this fund. Now, this is baffling, Mr Speaker, because earlier in oral questions, he again refused to say that deprivation would be included when considering the local government settlement going forward. Why is deprivation rightly included for this fund, but not as part of the fair funding formula review going forward? He also mentions Blackpool, yet Blackpool, the most deprived area in England, has seen a cut in spending power of over £45 million this decade. That is more than the £40 million a year that the entirety of the north-west of England will get from this fund. Mr Speaker, compared to the cuts that the Conservative government has inflicted on our local communities across the country, this new funding announcement is a drop in the ocean. Because we've seen £7.3 billion cuts in spending uh, over the last decade as a result of nine years of austerity. So even being favourable to ministers, the government's enticement is therefore five. £0.7 billion short of the cuts that they've already inflicted. That's £434 million short of the damage they've caused to the east of England. £405 million short of the damage they've caused to the uh, East Midlands. £505 million short of the damage they've caused to the North East. £1.18 billion short of the damage they've caused to the North West. £353 million short of the damage they've caused to the South East. £273 million short of the damage damage they've caused to the South West, 709 million short of the damage they've caused to the West Midlands, and 735 million short of the damage they've caused to Yorkshire and Humber. So what does the Secretary of State have to say to local people in regions for whom this money still leaves a massive shortfall uh, of hundreds of millions of pounds? And the funding promised by the Secretary of State over the next seven years does not even go close to matching the amounts the region
emissions will have received from the European Union over the previous seven years in the European Regional Development and Social Funding. This package is £642 million a year short of that money to these same English regions and that is despicable. Mr Speaker, to conclude, this announcement is inadequate and confused. So can I ask him, why is £600 million unallocated? Why is there no clarity at all over where the money will go and on what? He talks about other parts of the United Kingdom, so will this be distributed through Barnet Consequentials, or will it be uh, with MHCLG being given a new role here? What will the allocations to Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland be? And why did Number 10 not know over what period the announcement was this morning, only then for it to be clarified that it's over a long period of seven years. And finally, there's still time for ministers to reconsider the cuts to councils. So I ask the Secretary of State to do so and to do so immediately, because the danger for all of us is that our communities will continue to decline if they don't get the proper support they need. And it's time for a government that will give our towns and communities the funding and the resources and the support that they need to recover. One that will act genuinely in the interests of the many and not the few.